authors of books, editors of tabloids, guests on talk shows, are readily focused on the current state of affairs in the world, the war against terror, earthquakes, one just reported today in New Zealand, plagues, famines, disasters of every kind, natural and human, and see these as heralding the approach of the end of the world. Bogus pronosticators are looking at the signs of the times and seeing in the current clash between extremists and the civilized world, rise of the Antichrist, the definitive sign that the apocalypse is here. Some of these false prophets will be rather convincing, but we must always be mindful of the warning given to us by Jesus himself. Be careful not to be misled. And in reality, all we need do is look back in history, starting even with the turn of the first millennium or even before, to see that there's always been a bit of hysteria about the end time at various periods of history. Yet how many predicted dates of doomsday have come and gone, and yet the earth is still spinning on its axis. In order to avoid being, in, being taken in by all that we see from time to time it, through the media, then we need to ask ourselves just when weren't terrible wars and insurrections, famines, outbreaks of disease, storms, and devastating earthquakes occurring? Has there ever been a time when anyone who really took their faith seriously and tried to practice it was not at least ridiculed even sometimes by their own relatives and friends? And sadly, many have been persecuted. If we take a second, more reasoned look at the apocalyptic predictions in Scripture, particularly those found in today's Gospel, then we will see that what Jesus said would happen has indeed happened, is happening, and will probably continue to happen in the future. Each generation witnesses signs of the end times, and each individual faces the end of the world in the span of their own life, be that short or long. Now, this is not to say that the world will not one day come to its inevitable end. Yet it is to say that in some sense, that is really not our concern. For if there is one very consistent theme in the scriptural predictions of the apocalypse, it is that the day and time of its occurrence is completely beyond our ability to predict. It shall remain hidden and unknowable. What Jesus is trying to tell us then is that in the midst of whatever we must face in our own lifetime, no matter how frightening or disturbing, we must live as people of faith. There will be people who look at the occurrences around them and find reason to question their beliefs. If there really is a God, how would he let this happen, they will ask as indeed people have asked in regard to every sort of war and natural or human disaster and epidemic in history. Some find themselves questioning their faith in the face of every personal trial or disappointment. It cannot be that way with us if we really want to be counted among Christ's disciples. Jesus himself advises us that it is by our patient endurance that we will preserve our lives. Patience and endurance is an interesting expression, isn't it? For it implies that we need not be able to understand or explain all that happens globally or personally. Indeed, we need not like it or accept it. We can even ask why and grumble if necessary but we must 
persevere through it without losing faith, without falling into despair. How are we to do this, we may wonder, especially when things seem to get so bad, by remembering that it is Jesus in whom we are asked to place our faith. Jesus, who was brought to trial before kings and governors. Jesus, who was delivered up by a friend and put to death. And yet in all of this, not a hair of his head was truly harmed, in the sense that in spite of the horrible things to which he was subjected, even in spite of the torturous death that he endured in his passion, Jesus was not destroyed. He continues to live and promises the very same victory to us if we but keep faith. Thus, in the face of predictions of future destruction, even in the face of the present reality of civil strife, terrorist threats, disasters, disease, and death, let us never let ourselves get hysterical with fear, but rather endure with patience and maybe even some measure of peace, believing that God is truly the God of life who has raised his son Jesus from the dead, and trusting that no evil that we must experience, present or future, can ever rob us of the resurrected life God promises, just so long as that evil does not succeed in robbing us of our faith.